Boom! All right, what's going on, you guys? It's Royce Jacob. Welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to Waves Weekly, a series where we cover recent news and current events that I believe will impact the markets. These episodes are meant to be more chill, so sit back, grab yourself a drink. Right now, I am personally drinking out of the good old Block 5 mug, some black Kona coffee that actually one of my friends raised and roasted himself. Absolutely delicious. Has a little bit of stevia, a little bit of cinnamon, and some red turmeric tincture in there as well. Health is wealth, you guys. Healthy body healthy mind you absolutely want that in this game so cheers of the weekend you guys i hope it's been relaxing and you're resetting for the week ahead a little sippy sip before we get into it and as always let me know what you're drinking below this weekend cheers once again you guys let's dive in the first article we have to cover today is titled the fed this summer will take another step in developing a digital currency this is big news you guys this is big news not only for the united states for the dollar which we've been talking about for so long the fed's been needing to do this it's been needing to take action on this um but for the cryptocurrency space as a whole you guys this really is just another step in validating not the cryptocurrency space itself necessarily but the technology underlying the cryptocurrency space so in my personal opinion i do think this is good news for the cryptocurrency space obviously the the entire crypto sector is is, is highly volatile right now is going through a little phase is going through a little corrective period but overall net net i think this is a net positive for the cryptocurrency space so we will dive into this, this is the first article then we'll move on mix it up a little bit in to something very near and dear to my heart near and dear to many of our hearts robin hood is democratizing ipos ipo access is here so robin hood you guys doing very very good things in this space this is a great step in in, in just again democratization that's what robin hood was really built on is democratizing investing that's how robin hood started like commission free trading the reason robin hood popped off aside from a beautiful ui experience the user interface is absolutely amazing i love robin hood as a platform and an app but Robinhood really took the first step in democratizing trading and allowing traders who who maybe like before when you had to pay five, six dollars a trade um, on many brokerages, which is a lot for some people, especially if you want to get into the space A five, six dollar commission fee per trade is pretty intimidating to new traders. And Robinhood changed the game. They changed that narrative. And uh, now. Robinhood is responsible for pretty much every brokerage platform out there, allowing commission-free trading. And this is just another step in them democratizing the investment process, allowing early access to IPO so you're not buying it at 2x prices right, right off the rip, right when it's available to the majority of the public. And this is just another step, once again, in democratization of finance and investment. So very cool stuff here. We will then move back into crypto. Uh, titled, Bitcoin price falls after China calls for crackdown on Bitcoin mining and trading behavior. So of course, you guys, I know a lot of this you've already heard of, but I just want to give you guys some of my thoughts around not only Chinese regulation, but the potential for US regulation as well. Because regulatory fears we're definitely the primary catalyst behind the correction that we saw this past week. And I just want to give you guys some of my thoughts surrounding what um, regulation, once again, not only from China's perspective, but from an international perspective and prim primarily the China, the U.S., I guess, because those are the two key players within this space. Um, but I want to let you guys know if I think this is a reality, if I think this is possible and what I feel like the most likely scenario as this as this plays out over the course of the coming years is okay so that is the last article we're going to cover we will then close it out by taking a look at bitcoin and just just the overall cryptocurrency market right now it's bouncing back a little specifically bitcoin is seeing a little bit of a bounce right now um but things are still a little rough you guys we're not going to dive into the charts today again that is for pretty much all the other episodes we cover this is just a fun news focused episode but i do want to throw in just a little bit of my two cents on price action as we head into the week ahead okay so we'll close it out on the charts here and of course, with the content of the week, this is an interview posted on May 19th with Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong on cryptocurrency and the future of decentralization with Gary Tan. There's not much that I probably need to explain here, you guys. I'm sure you guys are familiar with Brian Armstrong if you're familiar with the space. Uh, but I'll talk a little bit more about this as the, at the end as we close this out. Let you guys know why I really like this as an interview, okay? But before we do dive into the articles, I do want to shout out the Discord, you guys. The mods, shout out. Mason Pigeon, you guys, Bren, Christian Shandy, Arad, you guys are 
crushing it on the discord i actually haven't done this yet but i, I feel like i should and i'm going to do it right now so this is actually just a small segment of what the discord channel looks like okay this is my announcements channel every morning i do post the trades i made that day let you guys know when the portfolio is updated when the newsletter is sent out if you guys are part of that as well post the youtube videos also just post whatever i feel like is important in this announcement bar but we got the general we got all these different channels in here that again shout out to my mods i could not be doing this without you guys you guys are absolute beasts at the discord unlike me I, I i need you guys so again i appreciate you guys a lot just want to give credit where credit's due but they've been doing a lot of cool stuff so many cool channels in here the engagement is great and uh it's just really exciting so i want to show you guys that if you did not have an idea of what the discord looked like just to just to give you guys an idea of what that is so that link will be down in the description as always you can use code youtube 15 if you want 15 bucks off exclusive ass access to the discord so just had to shout that out and uh give the mod some love because I, I don't think i've shouted them out yet and they definitely deserve it so shout out to you guys okay that said let's move in to this so fed the us cbdc key points the federal reserve will release a a research paper this summer that explores a move to a central bank digital currency. The moves of multiple countries, most prominently China, in the central bank digital currency space has intensified talk about how aggressively the Fed should move. Mr. JP, Jerome Powell, the Fed Reserve is moving forward in its efforts to develop its own digital currency. Announcing Thursday, it will release a research paper this summer that explores the move further. Though the central bank did not set any specific plans on the currency, Chairman Jerome Powell cited the progress of payments technology and said the Fed has been carefully monitoring and adapting to those innovations. And I quote, the effective functioning of our economy requires that people have faith and confidence, not only in the dollar, but also in the payments network, banks and other payment service providers that allow money to flow on a daily basis. I, that's very well said, very articulate, and I agree with that 100%. Powell said in a video message accompanying the announcement, quote, our focus is on ensuring safe and efficient payment system that provides a broad benefit to American households and businesses while also embracing innovation. So this is well said, like a lot of people, a lot of people give Jerome Powell a lot of hate, but this guy has, especially in this current macroeconomic environment, probably has one of the most difficult jobs in the entire world. And I, I don't think many, although it's, it's hard to the Fed has such a tough job. So I, I like JP, actually. I, I definitely want to cut him some slack. And uh, I do agree 100% with what he just said there. Is innovate, not rushing, but embracing that innovation. And, and this is a race. Realistically, he says he's not trying to compete with China. But there is a strong danger. Actually, I just forgot. I have to read these two last things because this this ties into what I want to say. Fed officials have emphasized the importance of getting issuance of a central bank digital currency right rather than participating in a race with its global peers. However, the moves of multiple countries, most prominently China in the CBDC, CBDC space, has intensified talk about how aggressively the Fed should move. China's progress has stirred worries that it could undermine the dollar's position as a global reserve currency. So, again, this is the thing, you guys. The, the U.S. dollar, as many of you know, we talk about it a lot here on the channel, is, is not in the best place right now. It's been falling off an absolute cliff ever since they started printing trillions of dollars. And that's supply and demand. If you just pump supply, there's going to be a little bit less demand, okay? So, although the dollar is, in my personal opinion, bottoming out, that's that aside, the dollar needs to do something to step up, especially when China, which is becoming such a, such a global superpower, is one of the two, I mean... The U.S. and China are the two global superpowers. That's that's that is a fact, and the fact that they have started working on the central bank digital currency a while back now, like like months ago, we were talking about this to the Chinese central bank digital currency, and we we're also talking about how the U.S. has to step up and get this in action again. Not rush it. I agree with what Jerome Powell said here. Not rush it, but embrace this and really put like you have to prioritize it because this not only. Um, this not only solidifies a future for the dollar and the potential for the dollar. Like if they don't do this, the dollar does have the capability of using of losing global reserve status, which is pretty much key in, in maintaining that 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 top spot in terms of the like international economics and just global standing. And uh, that's the U.S. definitely wants that. I'm a patriot. I, I would much rather have the U.S. have the global reserve currency than China. And in order to maintain that or at least to significantly better our chances of that moving forward the u.s does have to embrace the technology the blockchain technology um 
the technology underlined the entire cryptocurrency market and uh, create this US uh, CBDC. Okay, so great move moving forward. Again, I think this is the, the end of the beginning. In a sense, I do think that I do think that like the the days with the regulation that we're going to talk about at the end as well, kind of the days of the of the more like degenerate of the moon boys, like the moon boy days are are coming to an end pretty soon. Um, again, it's super fun. There are still going to be always always going to be projects that let that 100x in price or whatever. But as far as Bitcoin, Ethereum, the big dogs go, I don't think that it's it's going to be tough to see what happens here. I'm very bullish on Bitcoin. I don't think Bitcoin's going anywhere, which is again, again, we'll tie this into regulation as we close out the video. Um, there's no chance Bitcoin's going anywhere. Uh, I don't know how much this will affect the actual price of Bitcoin. Again, I do think it's a net positive for crypto overall. Um, but again, this tied in with the regulatory stuff is is something that makes me believe that the volatility will gradually slow down over time and uh, things will. But but again, it's it's just more exposure on crypto. Like if, if the central bank, if the U.S. central bank is creating a digital crypto dollar, then that does validate the cryptocurrency space as a whole. What that I still haven't really, it's very hard for me because I don't know. I, I can't, I don't want to speak in absolutes by any means, but it's very hard to imagine what exactly this does to a crypto space. Ultimately, right now, my instinct is that it's a net positive because it's bringing exposure to the cryptocurrency space as a whole. Okay. So again, we'll talk crypto a little more after this little break with Robinhood. So this is a very cool article. Robinhood, um, again, their UI on the app is great. And this article is just sick too. So let's read through this today. We are starting to roll out IPO access, a new product that will give you the opportunity to buy shares of companies at their IPO price before trading on public exchanges. With IPO access, you can now participate in upcoming IPOs with no account minimums. Most IPO shares typically go to institutions or wealthier investors. With IPO access, everyday investors of Robinhood will have the chance to get in at the IPO price. Here's how it works. One, discovering upcoming IPOs from a list of participant co participating companies that plan to distribute shares to Robinhood. You can also follow those companies to stay up to date on the milestones, excuse me, and read their preliminary prospectus to learn about the business model, management team, and risk factors. Two, request to buy shares of the companies at their initial listing price range. When the final price is set, you'll be able to review, edit, or cancel your request before shares are allocated to Robinhood customers. Three, watch and wait. IPO shares can be very limited, but all Robinhood customers get an equal shot at shares regardless of order size or account value. IPO access is rolling out gradually to all customers over the coming weeks. In the meantime, check out our help center to learn more. Yada, 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 yada. Here's to democratizing IPOs for us all. So again, you guys, Robinhood, the ultimate platform of decentralization. They've also gone under the microscope a bit over the past couple of months. Little shady, little shady moves, Vlad. But um, again, Robinhood, as a platform is a net net it's the same like net positive absolute net positive for the financial landscape for the investor landscape again we would not have seen what we saw this year with a flood of retail investors a flood of new interests a flood of younger individuals specifically educating their educating themselves on the financial markets and starting the journey towards what could be a very very lucrative future for themselves if it wasn't for robin hood and i i'm very very confident in that and I, I don't think there's reason any reason to dispute that to be honest so robin hood good news here i love to see this it will be interesting to see how this executes i might i probably won't make a video in all honesty we'll definitely discuss it in the newsletter and in, in the discord and stuff but um again just great stuff here this is awesome and it's very cool to see robin hood again always evolving in the space and always pushing forward that that underlying principle of democratization in the financial markets okay so shout out robin hood Robin had done so much for me personally, so much for this channel. I imagine so much for you guys as well. So big shout out, Robin Hood, as always. Let's get back to what everyone wants to talk about. And that's Bitcoin. So Bitcoin price falls after China calls for crackdown on Bitcoin mining and trading behavior. Again, at this point, I'm sure you guys have already read some articles on this. You've already heard of this. You've already thought about it yourself. But I'll just give you guys a few of my key thoughts here around regulation. Key points. Chinese Vice Premier... Premier... Liu He and State Council, I'm sorry if I butchered that, State Council said tighter crypto regulation is needed to protect the financial system. Bitcoin's price on Coinmetrics said more, slid more than 6%, you guys know that. Bitcoin's price tumbled Friday following an intensified call from Chinese authorities to crack down on mining and trading of the cryptocurrency. Chinese Vice Premier Liu He and State Council said in a statement that tighter regulation is needed to protect the financial system. The statement released late Friday in China said it's necessary to crack down on Bitcoin mining and trading behavior and resolutely prevent 
uh, yeah, resolutely prevent the transmission of individual risk to the social field. Okay, so U.S. Well, we'll break it down. China, U.S. My thoughts on regulatory issues there. China has a much much greater chance of potentially regulating Bitcoin. They've, they've, there's so much that's happened in China um, that I don't want to dig into now. I don't want to dig into um, specifics here, really. But if you guys are aware of what's going on in China, just not just just the the CCP is a very capable organization. You guys know that the, the CCP does run China. Just I mean, I think they just ousted the, the CEO of Binance or of, 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 of not Binance. Binance, Byte Dance, who's the owner of actually TikTok, earlier this week, they ousted Jack Ma, and they're really asserting power. So um, that's what the CCP does. It's a communist country. That's the reality of is is of being in a communist country. Is the government rules? The government. You don't have a choice here. The government. If they they just ousted the greatest CEOs, the most powerful CEOs in their entire country. So the fact they can do that and all the other kind of dark stuff that I don't want to talk about. It gives me reason to believe that if they really wanted to regulate crypto, they can. If you're using crypto, you're going to jail. If you're, if we find crypto, you're. Um, I mean, there's so many things that can be done in the government's power to regulate crypto. Can they kill crypto? There's, I think, there's very, very, very little sub one sub point one percent chance that China will destroy Bitcoin. The Chinese market is a massive, massive market for Bitcoin and Bitcoin mining as well. So, it would if if China completely shut down today? That would, ex that would extremely disrupt just the blockchain itself, the Bitcoin blockchain itself. Um, but it would not destroy Bitcoin. So this is also something that will take time and will not be implemented. Like they could implement it immediately. Will it be executed immediately? That's uh, th uh, almost impossible. It will take a lot of time. And uh, again, the fact that they're trying to do this does does raise those kind of like rate also if the fact that they want to do this encourages those in their country to want to do it that much more, that kind of that, that stubborn mentality. And also the fact that if you hold a large percentage of your net worth in Bitcoin and then China just ousts it, you want to get that Bitcoin and you want to get out of there. Okay. So that's China. I think China uh, does actually have a chance of regulating this. Uh, what effect that will have I don't really have much input on that, but China, if they really want to regulate this, if they put their mind to it, I, I don't see a reason that they can't. The U.S. though, I think the U.S. being far, far, far more democratic, and uh, they they do feel that you can tell the government and the Fed, and especially with what Jeanette Yellen uh, of the Treasury said about kind of tax evasion and stuff. That's probably the primary thing. Is um, I like how the the darker use, like the money laundering and, and kind of criminal usage case use cases of Bitcoin is kind of becoming a part of the past because everyone's understanding that that's not really the case but tax evasion uh in my even in my opinion is a very very real issue here when it comes to crypto because it's still so early so many people are just printing money especially over the course of this past bull this bull market and uh tax evasion is a very real deal so i do think crypto almost 100% will face tighter regulation over the coming years in the United States, whether that's like a 10% tax on every single crypto trade or just an extra 10% tax on top of cap gains. Just because again, people, the, the government knows people are printing. Do I agree with that? Uh, from a, from just a fundamental principles perspective? No, because it's not even, it's not, I mean, you can, it's not like a security, but it's also like not a currency. I get cap gains, it's it's pretty much just cap gains so i'm just yeah it's that's that's like all it is cap gains but again it's like a currency of its own should you be able to tax this currency that's not even native to anything i don't i don't really agree with that if you do convert it into us dollars i get that but if you just make money year over year and don't convert it to usd then I, that doesn't make much sense but again that's just more that's more opinion stuff regardless i do think the us will regulate crypto but i do think there's also too much institutional interest at this point there's too there's too many big dogs there's too many whales there's too many people with a little too much power that are starting to, starting to and, and their wallets their wallets are pretty thick too when it comes to you know swaying the deals a little bit but uh again there's too much there's too many prominent individuals involved in crypto at this point involved in bitcoin see the potential for bitcoin and the future that cryptocurrency can provide so there's no chance in my mind at all that the u.s illegal like illegalizes crypto 
But again, regular whether it's a 10% extra 10% tax, I think that's to be honest the most likely. Um, I do think it's going to be taxed a little heavier than standard cap gains, and that may drive some people away. But if it's an extra 10% and you're making again, you're making 500%. That's that's just kind of how the game goes. Okay, so that's that. Let's close it out by taking a look at Bitcoin price. So Bitcoin in the last 24 hours up almost 5%, just floating under $38,000. Um, Again, you guys, I've been kind of calling for this over the past couple of weeks now. This looked like it was going to happen. Obviously, there was that flood of fundamental hurdles. But it's weird how a lot of the time the fundamentals will initiate the tech. Like there's the technicals there and the technicals look like what they're they're going to do what they're going to do. And it just so happens the, the fundamentals come in, whether it's to the upside or downside to to catalyze the move that looks like is going to play out of the chart. So it's funny how that happens. That's just how. That's the weird world of the markets. Everything just kind of plays together in this in this ether that is the financial markets. Um, speaking of ether, ether down on the day. A lot of the a lot of the um, altcoins a little bit down. Doge Cardano holding up. Um, I do still think there's more rocky roads ahead. If you guys watch my last Bitcoin analysis, at least the last one I did, um, last video I made on it Thursday, um, I do think the most likely scenario. Actually, I might have said that. I, I, I think. It was either in the newsletter or the, or the video. I think I said in the video as well. But I do think that the most likely scenario is a lot of sideways price action floating between like $30,000 and $40,000. I think for for a hot minute, we're probably going to be going sideways for the most part. Just in a in, like a lot of volatility, like $30,000, $40,000, $30,000, $40,000. But it's, I do, I, I will say that I think it's more likely, way, 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 way more likely at this point that we see $25,000 before $100,000. Okay. So, um, my money, as I've been saying for a while now, again, absolute, like once support is broken, which it has been on the chart, I'm not looking at the charts. I'm just explaining to you guys just cause I've been looking at this freaking chart so much. Um, support's broken. The initial high of the rally is usually going to be the absolute base prior to capitulating prior to resuming that overall long-term rally that Bitcoin won 100% will in my opinion, but I do think we're probably going to come down to 25,000 at some point when that is, I don't know exactly when, but I do think over the short term, we're probably just going to go very side, like volatility sideways. Um, I would not be surprised if over the course of this week, because I'm bearish on equities as well, that we come down to about 30, like 30, maybe close to 30,000 once again. Okay. So that's Bitcoin. Uh, the rest of the market is, is really taking the tumble ether down 40% over the past seven days, BNB 50%, like everything pretty much just getting smoked, which, um, Again, it's not surprising to me that crypto market wiped off like a trillion, like 50% of its value, a trillion dollars within the span of a very short amount of time. What's the crypto market cap at right now? Uh, global crypto market cap is at 1.5 trillion. So about 30%, like 30 to 40% of the of the global market cap has been absolutely obliterated. But again, that kind of makes sense. And uh, that's why I'm also glad that I have a lot of Tether and uh, USDC at the moment. So that's that you guys uh i will again over the course of this week we will of course talk bitcoin talk stocks and uh, also want to talk to you guys about some of the other things some of the other sectors in the market that i'm excited about as well again in my personal portfolio i'm not even shout out to the portfolio if you guys want to want to do that 15 bucks a month first link down in the description but in my personal portfolio it's actually very very different than than like like crypto everyone's talking about crypto everyone wants to know what's going on with crypto i still love crypto as an asset class but I'm a trader. I'm trying to make money. And there's a lot of things that I'm doing in my portfolio that I don't talk about at all on this channel that I'm actually very excited about. So maybe over the course of this week, we will dive into some new stuff. Now that crypto is starting to slow down, move into different realms, move into different lanes. And uh, that should be exciting. Okay. So move forward, always adapt, adapt, you get slapped. Close it out. Content of the week CEO or <laughs> Coinbase CEO, Brian Armstrong on cryptocurrency and the future of decentralization. Brian Armstrong, very smart dude. Um, there's not much I can say about this this interview specifically, other than Brian Armstrong, obviously CEO of Coinbase, highly competent individual, very very early, very rich because he was early on BTC. And uh, the interview is done by Gary Tan. So if you guys are on YouTube, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if you've heard of Gary at this point. He is a very he's he's like OG venture capital, OG angel investor, and this guy was very early. He he was one of the first investors in Coinbase, and actually had a massive exit. So not only this interview, but go check out Gary Tan as well, because his videos are very, very good. And he has a lot of sh like shorter form, not all interviews, but shorter form, almost philosophical, just kind of self-help videos that that I really enjoy as well. Like so I've done so much freaking self-help and I've evolved out of that as I've grown as an entrepreneur and individual and uh, just late as, as I'm going as I'm going into my career, as I'm 
doing my best to contribute more than I consume. I still enjoy things like this, and, and Gary has a lot of great videos. So go check out Gary Ton's YouTube channel and uh, show him some love because he's putting a lot of work into his contents. Okay, this is by no means a sponsored. Uh, that sound a little bit sponsored. This is by no means a sponsor. I just like supporting individuals who are doing on. Uh, in my opinion, a better job of what I'm personally trying to do. Okay, so shout out Gary Tong, go check him out. And uh, we'll close it out there, you guys. Again, YouTube 15, if you want to check out the um, the Discord channel, all the links to all this good stuff is going to be down in the description. Good is relative. I put work into it. My mods put work into it. So I'm going to say it's good. And uh, hopefully you guys think so as well. So once again, you guys, close it out with another sip of coffee. Cheers to the weekend. I'm going to go swap this out for tequila. Some tequila. So cheers, you guys. And I'll catch you next time. Until then, always remember, take action. Make waves. Peace.